Hello. A kyphoplasty is a method of repairing a fractured vertebral body using a special type of injection. Today's topic is a kyphoplasty using stem cells and bank bone. As we age, our bones can lose calcium. Too much loss of calcium is called osteoporosis and the bones become very weak. These bones can fracture or collapse under even very minor trauma. Here you see an x-ray of the lumbar spine. We're seeing the lumbar spine from the side. Typically these bones all look like boxes. In the case of a fracture, they're going to collapse or smash down. It may look like a triangle. This collapse occurs because of osteoporosis. These fractures can be extremely painful. The individual may not be able to stand up or even roll over in bed. Elderly people typically get these fractures, and in elderly people, it's very important that they stay active. Their ability to walk determines their health. For example, if an elderly person falls and breaks a hip, we consider it almost an emergency to fix that hip in a timely fashion. And that's because if we don't, the patient will die. And they die not from the broken hip, but from the inactivity. If you have a family member who has a compression fracture and you and the physician have decided that it needs treatment, there are various options you can choose from. Classically, these options have included one of two different types of injections of cement. This is either a vertebroplasty or a kyphoplasty. Now we have an advance in which we have the ability to inject stem cells and bank bone in using the kyphoplasty technique. As a brief overview, a vertebroplasty is where a needle is placed into the vertebral body and we inject cement. We actually inject a very liquid cement and therefore there's the possibility that that liquid may not stay in the right spot. It could even go into the blood and embolize to the lungs, heart, brain causing a stroke. And because it's a liquid, it doesn't really give us the ability to restore the normal height and alignment of the vertebral body. Because of this, the vertebral the vertebroplasty is not commonly used and has essentially been replaced by the kyphoplasty. The kyphoplasty uses a needle to place a balloon and then we blow that balloon up trying to restore the normal height and alignment of the vertebral body and then that void that is created we fill with some very thick cement. The idea is restoring the height is good and the thick cement would be less likely to travel to other locations, but it still can. It is still a liquid, and it still can get into the blood. It can still embolize. It can still go to the lungs, heart, uh, brain, can cause a stroke. That brings us to today's topic, which is a kyphoplasty, but using stem cells and bone. The way this is done is a tube is placed in the vertebral body, and through that tube, we place some mesh. And the mesh is like a balloon, and we fill that balloon with a combination of bank bone and stem cells. The big advantages I see with this technique is, number one, it's much safer because we are filling the balloon. The balloon is less likely to embolize to other places in the body. Bone is less likely to embolize in the other, other places in the body, so less likely to get a stroke or a heart attack. That balloon can be filled under a great amount of pressure, so it can more reliably restore the height and alignment of the vertebral body. Uh, we can expand that bag and put a great amount of pressure in that to elevate the uh, vertebral body when the little balloon may not have been able to. Another advantage is the fact that we are filling the bone full of bone. We're not filling it full of cement. If you fill it full of cement, you've essentially burned some bridges. You can't put another screw, you can't put a screw in there, you can't do other surgical procedures. And then the final thing is, 
with bone, bone is not too stiff. If you fill an elderly person's bone with cement, that cement can be very, very stiff and it can cut through the very osteoporotic bone that it's trying to help creating other problems. Filling bone with bone is less likely to lead to those type of problems and the mismatch between something really stiff and uh, very soft doesn't occur. All of these procedures can be done under local anesthetic, but in most cases, I'm gonna say uh, use general anesthetic. It's kind of like if you go to the dentist and he asks you, do you want the gas? Use the gas. And the reason for that is many of these, most of the patients that have these are older. They don't hear well. They may have some dementia. Uh, they don't follow commands well. So they don't stay still when I'm trying to inject them. And therefore, a procedure that would take 10 minutes with a little bit of gas could take all afternoon. I actually think there's much more stress on the patient uh, and probably a greater risk of a heart attack with local anesthetic than general anesthetic in most cases. So what are my take home messages about kyphoplasties and treating compression fractures? Number one, we're treating fractures. Fractures will heal. So we are treating something that left alone would heal by itself. They do not have to have surgery, number one. Number two, these fractures occur in elderly people that are increased at increased risk for any type of procedures, especially anesthesia, and therefore the decision to do this should not be taken lightly. Third point, it is not something done to, treat, to treat pain. It's not a pain control technique. We have other things for that. The indications for this surgery is based upon a loss of function. So for example, if the patient cannot stand up, that would be an indication to do it. If I go to the hospital and see a patient and they can stand up and walk around, even if it hurts, I would probably recommend that they don't do it. Um, if the patient can't stand up, the morbidity associated with not being able to walk in an elderly person is very high. So then you might want to do the surgery. Um, once again, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you learned something. I hope I answered some of your questions. Um, please leave a comment below. And if you have any other questions, please leave those as well. If you can, please give us a like if you like this video, and I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. Once again, thank you very much.